Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So, today I'm going to be talking about astrogen farming. This is just another guide. Um, very, very simple. And a lot of players actually do know how to do this already. But this is for the people that don't. If you already know how to do this, I'm going to also be introducing a advanced method to farming. And I'll be explaining how to effectively use your time and stuff like that in this video. So, without further ado, let's begin. Now, this is a little bit dangerous because, you know, the first rule of Fight Club, no, the first rule of MSL states that you don't talk about astrogen farming. All right. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm doing this just for you guys. So if I, if my like ch channel gets shut down tomorrow, like I disappear or like, I, I don't know, you get news that I, I died in some tragic, like just some, some freak accident or some shit like that, then it's because of this video, okay? It's, it's all because of this video. Now, I'm only talking about the taboo subject of astrogen farming. Um, I don't know. I feel like nobody really talks about this because it, it kind of is sort of an exploit. But the devs probably already know about it. Now, it's not really much of an exploit, but it, it, it does make a... It does add up and make a huge, huge difference. Now... The method is really, really simple. Uh, you basically convert gold into astrogems. Everyone knows how to convert astrogems into gold, right? You farm golems and you sell the gems, and that basically turns your astrogems into gold. But there is a way to convert gold into astrogems. Now, the, re the, the way that you do that is you take a bunch of one-star monsters. Um, it doesn't actually have to be one-star monsters. But one-star monsters are cheaper to evolve, I think. Like, I think 5-star monsters cost more to to actually evolve and stuff. Yeah, 5-star monsters do cost more to evolve. Um, you take a bunch of 1-star monsters, and you evolve them into Evo 3. And each time you do Evo 2 evolution, or you do Evo 3 evolution, you get a quest completion. And it gets you... It, you get, you get Basically, you just get more Astro Gems that way, through the quests. Now... Uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about math, but not real math, because I'm really bad at math. But, you know, if you guys have ever heard of the term bro science, this is bro math. It's not real math. It's close enough. And, yeah, it's just, it's it's not real math, but it's close enough. All right. So that's, that's what bro math is. Now... 10,000 astrogems, or not 10,000, um, 330,000 astrogems equals 100, or not, th 330,000 gold equals 100 astrogems. That is the basics of it. If you want an easier way to remember that, 1 million gold equals 300 astrogems. Just think of it like that. Okay? Now, what we need right now is 16, uh, 16 one stars. We need 16 one stars. I caught a few over here. I think I'm short like three, but I'm just going to go into the map and I'm going to cash three more. And I'm going to show you guys, uh, first, firstly, how I cash the one stars because there's, there's some trick to this as well. So you don't like mess up. Now, the best places to farm for the one stars are Phantom Forest, uh, I think Phantom Forest is the best one because it's, it's, there's a two-in-one chance. I decided to go to Lunar Valley because I have a very slight chance to get a Candling here. Um, so I, it's not too bad. I can pretty much guarantee to always catch three here. So it's not it's not the end of the world if I don't. Now, you go in. Um, you want to do this on normal mode. You want to do it, I think, on the gold map. If you, I think gold map's probably the best because you just get more gold. Um, unless you want XP. I guess it doesn't really matter. The The gain you get here is just very, very small. So what you want to do is you want to catch as many 1 stars as possible. Now the reason why you want to catch 1 stars rather than 2 stars is because 1 stars have a higher chance to be caught. Like right now if I if I try to catch I have a 95% chance that it, it gets caught. So um, what you want to do is you, obviously you want to upgrade your Phantom Forest catch rate to, to full so you can catch the slimes or you can catch it on Lunar Value if you want to catch on this map um but i think the other one with with the slimes is slightly better okay so i caught three 
you don't really need to continue you can basically just give up now um, just, just just to save some time you can just give up it doesn't really matter this isn't about efficiency the only th the only efficiency that you have to worry about when farming for astrogens is time time is the only thing that is important everything else does not matter because everything else can be converted time is the only resource that you have like real physical time is the only resource that you have that cannot be converted and is is the thing that you will need to invest um, in order for things to, to turn out now now we have 16 of these uh, these one stars. It can be any one stars. It doesn't have to be these. It can be slimes. It can be mimics. It can be whatever you want. But these are just easier to catch. So what you want to do is just watch my gold right here. Um, I start with one three five. After this, I'm gonna be. I'll probably be down to four million eight hundred thousand ish, um, around that that amount. Once I finish this. So you want to, what you want to do is you want to evolve your one star or your one star into an evil two, and then once you've finished evolving it, then you go into the quest. This is very very important. All right, every single time you evolve, you need to go get this quest. Like it, if you don't do it, you basically lose your profit because you get about a ten percent profit every single time that you do this. Um, so if you miss the quest once, you basically just lost your profit. So, you do that once, so this one's evil too. You awaken this one, you evolve this one. It's very, very simple. Go out, grab the quest. Come back. You evolve another one. See how smoothly I am doing this? I've done this so many times. Okay, so now you should have four of these. I think I had one extra one in my inventory that left over from some time. Um, now, the, the, the trick here is to save a little bit of time. Like this can actually save you a few seconds every single time you do it. And if you do it enough times, it actually saves you quite a lot of time. Is during your thir the, the fourth one that you evolve, you can actually straight out evil three it because the two quests are different quests. They're not the, the same quest. So I just evolved this one, and then you might as well release it right now because you don't need this monster anymore. It has no value. You just release it. You come here, you grab these two quests at the same time. So you've, you evolved four monsters to evil two and one monster to evil three. The quest for evil two is for, for um, 10 astro gems each, coming to a total of 40. And the evolution quest for evil three gets you 60. And that gets you a total, a grand total of 100 astrogens per 330,000 gold, as you see right here. Now, um, yeah, it's exactly 330,000 gold. So I've effectively converted that gold into astrogens. And you repeat that process a few times, you will be able to get quite a lot of gold. Now, with 100 astrogens, um, or if you want to think about it like this, with 300 astrogens, you can refill 10 times. Can you make a million gold within 10 refills? Uh, if you do that, and if you do golems B10 or B, B7 and above, you will be able to profit. You will be able to get more than 1 million gold every 10 refills. Um, now, there's two things, two good things about doing this. One, you get about a 10% profit um, of about 10 astrogems every single time that you convert. The second thing is you also basically get to farm golems for free. Like, you, you can... Um, you farm golems, and you basically there's you get a few extra like a bit of extra gold, but it's not counting like that one million gold is not counting the gems that you actually keep like the really really good gems. If you're at the point where you're only keeping like really really good six star gems, then you make even more profit because you don't need any of the other gems. Now you can so you can just do this over and over again. You can farm golems for free, farm golems really fast as long as you have a fast golems um, B7 to 10 team depending on whichever floor you want to farm. Now, to make this like the most effective uh, or the most efficient, you do want to farm B10, but you need a fast enough team. If your team is not really fast with B10, it would be recommended that you go back and farm B8 or like with a with a, just a nuker comp. Um, or, or if you're only able to farm B7, you can farm B7. 
because that's that's the only dungeon you can farm. So, uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. That is the simplest, the easy way to convert uh, convert astrogems. Now, this is the advanced method. The advanced method is something I haven't done yet, but I, I've known about it for quite a long time. And it's one of the reasons why I've been working on a Dragon Speed 10 team so, like, just so diligently. Now, the, the advanced method is still the same thing. Uh, the, convert, the conversion from gold to astrogems is still the exact same, but the conversion from astrogem to gold is going to be different here. Now, what we're going to do instead of farming golems is we're going to go to Slumbering City. And we're going to go on this gold map right here, right over here. This is the gold bonus map. The reason why you want to do this is if you've been playing this game or you've been observant enough, you might have noticed that through every single map that you progress in, you get a little bit more gold and XP every single time that you move on to the next map. So Slumbering City is literally the last map of the game. And it, I think this will be more effective once these two maps open up. And what you want to do is you want to farm on the gold bonus map, the one that gives you bonus gold, because gold is the resource that you want. You want to convert astrogems into gold. Gold is the, the thing that you want to farm. So you go on the gold map. So this is the most efficient. It's on extreme. Story mode, if you farm on extreme, is, has the highest efficiency. And it is the last map, so it gives you the most out of your 5 energy, because it's the very, very last map. And this is also the gold stage. So the gold stage also gives you bonus gold. So combine all those things together, this stage actually makes it more, um, not as profitable as farming golems, but it basically you break, you just about break even. Now, why would you do this instead of doing golems? Uh, there's two reasons. One is there's an event going on. If there's an event going on, you need to catch certain monsters to to do do your event. Um, you know, for your for your whatever event it is, like it's an event capturing monster, then obviously you want to farm on this stage for um, for the chance of catching the event monster. The other thing is, if you want 3-star monsters for rebirth and you don't want to waste resources, you can farm on this stage, and you basically you just infinite farm. Now, the other really, really big thing, the one really, really big thing about farming this is, on story maps, you can get dragon sigils. And if you do this for a whole entire week, you can get like 200 dragon sigils, and it's going to be, like, you're going to be farming dragons like mad. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I've been working on a Dragon Speed 10 team for so much, so, for so long, because I wanted to make my dragons run as effective, as efficient as possible. I don't want to use up extra astrogems to to farm. Now, yesterday, I t in if you watch my "You Can Do Dragon Speed 10 2 video, I explained, um, you know, how astrogem is farmable and how it's more efficient for you to for you to always farm B10, to skip all the other dragon floors and only farm B10. Because if you think of it like this, Astrogem is infinitely farmable. You can do that throughout the week. Like you can basically farm golems throughout the week. And with your extra Astrogems, you can take that um, into whatever dragon, like you might have a few dragon sigils. If you didn't farm the story maps that much, um, you might have a few dragon sigils. I might as well do a run through the stage. This stage is actually really hard. Like it's, it's, it's a, uh, I wouldn't say as hard as Golden Speed 10, but it's like, it's like harder than B8, basically. Like this, this stage literally is harder than B8 to run. Um, so you actually need a proper dungeon team in order to run this stage. Or if you have like really, really good gems with like sustain, you know. I was thinking putting four monsters on, on leech or something like that. I'll try it with one armor breaker, see if it works well. I haven't really tested a team for this stage. I'm still I'm still in the process of making an actual farming team for, just for this stage. Um, it's going to be my next like next project. Like the next immediate project is to is to make a farming team for this stage. It's probably going to involve some sort of armor break and a lot of regression um, because they, as you can see, they are level 93, which is pretty high. Like they're they're hard. This stage is actually harder to farm than Golden's B8. I don't think it's as hard as B10. But it's it's definitely because it has no boss. But the monsters are are harder than the B10 monsters. They have high resistance. They have a lot of a uh, lot of bullshit. Now going back to the topic of farming dragons B10. If you farm throughout the week and you're you're doing the method where you're just farming golems for gold and you're going into um, I think my Thor is dead. I shouldn't have brought him. Uh, that's a little bit sad. You're if you're farming golems throughout the week, and you did, did a few story maps to get a few dragon sigils. Say for example you got uh, 
10 or like you know 14 dragon sigils you can do seven runs of dragons any any floor of dragons now would you use your dragon sigils on lower floors for lower quality gems or would you go into b10 to to farm the highest quality gems now say for example you can farm for b7 um, which gives you a chance for five star two six star gems then uh and you can 100 percent it or you farm B10 where you have to refill twice. Like which, which is the better option? Um, I think a lot of people don't see that B10 is actually still the better option, because all resources are convertible. You can convert ast gold into astrogens. You can convert anything. You can anything is farmable. So the extra refills that you're farming, like that, that your uh, the extra re revives that you have to use, you can actually farm that throughout the week in extra astrogems. I think people just don't like using their astrogems, like it, it just, it it makes them feel uncomfortable that they have to use it um, in order to farm, it feels, it makes them feel like it's a waste. But if you think of it in, in terms of progression, then the only thing that really matters is real time. Like you, everyone has the same exact amount of time. If you're, if you're talking about gem progression, um, if everyone's doing the, the the method where you're farming golems, you you get extra astrogens, you get extra gold, and you're doing that throughout the whole entire week. Um, person A farms dragons B7 and saves his extra astrogens for summons. Um, person B saves his astrogens for dragon refresh or revives. Um, you know, person B's gem progression is going to be a lot faster than than person A. But uh, you know, person A does have that, have more chances maybe to summon. Um, but it really isn't worth it because, like, with 600 astrogems, you can ref you can revive in dragons so many times. So if you think of it like like you know the way I think of it is the only thing that really matters, like the only finite resource in Monster Super League is your actual real physical time. Everything else is convertible. So. You don't need to worry about your success rate. You don't need to worry about wasting whatever resources in order to to do anything else. As long as it's it's more efficient, um, even if, if it makes you feel uncomfortable, just do it. All right, just do it. Um, just do the math. If the math is right, even if it makes you feel uncomfortable, just do it. So that's pretty much it. Now I think I think that might be a unique stance. Like nobody nobody really wants to do Dragon V10, but I think everyone should. Um, now you can you can take my advice or you can you can ignore me. Think I'm crazy, but you know when I'll, I'll say this again. I said this in the last video. If you if you get overtaken by the people who believe me, don't don't blame me for it. Um, well, that's pretty much it. That's all I have to say. So, anyways, um, thank you guys so much for watching. And hopefully you guys learned something, and that actually announces my next next big plan, next big thing that I I'm going to be doing in Monster Super League. I, f I think my my progression is just so much more different than every and anyone else. I like don't care about what's in front of me. I only care about the the end goal really. Like that's 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 all. Because think of it like this: um, if you have some Nat Five right now, think of it. If you think of it. In pr terms of progression like this if you have some op nat 5 right now and you're already at the point where you can clear dragons b10 with like a few revives and you can clear giants b10 um you know efficiently and your your b7 b8 team is like pretty fast doesn't matter which nat 5 you pull you won't farm faster like you will not farm physically faster maybe maybe like you could use like you know a water valk or something for for golden speed 10 but then you would have to happen to pull that and uh you know, have like three Valkyries to get your, well, everyone got, has a water Valk, but you need to like pull like three Valkyries to get your Valkyrie to evil three for it to be like an effective nuker versus any other light nuker you can bring into B10. Um, and the, the odds of that happening are just so much lower. And if you think about, about it like this, if you just play the game enough, eventually you're going to get all the Nat 5s like that, that you, you would want in the game because at some point you're going to be able to summon. But you're going to progress so much faster if you're farming in a more efficient way already than someone who is farming as a little bit less inefficient than you. You know, the, the difference will catch up, you know. So, um, yeah, that's just what I'm trying to say. So, hopefully, hopefully uh, this, this helped you guys out. And if you, 
if you um th there's no if like that's that's the end of the video <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching and um i'll see you guys in the next video peace out